Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another night of the fights. This ought to be an interesting main event. Thank you for tuning in from all across the world, from Africa to America to Canada to England. I welcome you all to another night of the fights, and this ought to be a very interesting matchup. I am your host, Fight Night's Finest, the Sophie commentator, and we got an interesting matchup today with Ricky Hatton going up against Miguel Cotto. And, you know, Dave the Rip one being controlled by Ricky Hatton is just one of those veteran fighters of the game, one of those guys that you expect to give it his all and give a valiant effort throughout the night. A guy who likes to come forward, can box on the outside. But we got to look at the fighter matchups here with Ricky Hatton being one of those fighters that you just don't typically see in an online rank match in Fight Night Champion. Uh, he's not really one of those class A caliber fighters that can pretty much go up against everybody and no matter who the opponent is going up against uh, it's usually going to be a tough matchup to win. Uh, Miguel Cotto being a very balanced fighter was the one of the fighters that you can use very early on in the development stages of the game with the demo being released. He is one of those characters that is very well balanced can box on the, on the outside or he can come in and brawl on the inside with the strength and power that he has so it ought to be an interesting matchup but you know what they say any character can be used in the hands of a skilled player uh, this game having the auto block and having some of the disadvantages that it does on defense makes it tougher to fight with lower class fighters such as Ricky Hatton but like I said any fighter can be used and the hands of a correct player can be done right or the player can do that fighter justice so in the black and navy blue, we got Ricky Hatton going up against Miguel Cotto in the blue, gold, white trunks. Now those are some weird color schemes considering the fact he only has white and blue in the sneakers. But hey, I mean it is what it is. But like I said, Dave the Rip one being a crafty veteran of the game and has been around basically since the beginning. I look for this to be a pretty even matchup. Uh, you guys saw the Miguel Cotto's record in the beginning shows that he is a caliber fighter that can pretty much take on all comers and we're seeing a pretty action-packed first round here as we come to the end of round one where a lot of high-paced action was going on a lot of guys uh, fighting back with each other with beautiful combinations but I like the pressure game that I'm seeing out of Hatton even though that stamina recovery wasn't the best that it could be that round I'm liking what I see so Hatton with the pressure game Cotto boxing on the outside trying to set things up with his jabs and just a few other combinations that basically tends to work on a regular basis as he connects two uppercuts there but what I'm seeing is that these punches really isn't affecting Hatton he's still able to walk through them he's still able to come forward and still able to apply his gameplay um, his game plan I'd like to see him calm down on those combinations just a bit more that will give him a better position or put himself in a better position to have stamina later on in the match. Uh, this being a 10 round fight that it is and with, like I said both of these guys being class A fighters you never know what can happen and you don't want to go ahead and waste all your stamina in the beginning of the rounds. Coming down to a minute and 30 seconds here in this round Cody just delivered some beautiful body work and uh, he seems to be punishing the Rip one quite a bit for his forward and power aggression using Hatton. Uh, gets a nice counter jab to the stomach there with Ricky Hatton and Continue to walk through these punches, taking things, uh, taking quite a few nice licks. But I am liking what I see out of the rip one, being able to pressure him and put him back up against the ropes, which is where he wants him. I like to see him work a little bit more when he has him on the ropes. Nice jab and his way onto the inside and counter on a right hook to the body. And we have our first clinch of the night, ladies and gentlemen. Cotto executes the first clinch of the game. And typically in a fight in a champion online rank match, you don't see much clinch much clinching but clinching and pushing is just one of those defensive techniques that's just not executed by a lot of fighters on a regular basis and that was a beautiful exchange of counters that we just seen from both players uh, I believe Cotto did get the better of that exchange and he ends up putting him down onto the canvas for the first time it was a beautiful combination that did it with the straight that finished him off and down goes Hatton for the first time and this is what I'm talking about with the forward aggression being paid off by Cotto on the outside. He's definitely the harder puncher and Hatton not having the greatest chin did put Dave the Rip one at an extreme disadvantage having to come forward using Ricky Hatton. Not the best chin. He was able to take some of those shots pretty nicely early on and able to walk through but it was only a matter of time before the power of Cotto gets to him. Uh, 
neither of these guys really have the best stamina or endurance conditioning wise. Both of these fighters can become gassed really early on and you're starting to see that stamina deteriorate quite a bit only into round three uh, on the rip when stamina monitor but um, can't really see what's going on with Miguel Cotto but looks to me that he's still doing pretty well but I think he would be in the same exact position as David Ritwin considering the fact that he's boxing off his back foot and he's throwing punches while moving backwards which does take up a lot more stamina so looking to see a bit more pressure from Cotto in this round or at least trying to get the thing or at, least, at least trying to get the job done excuse me ladies and gentlemen but at least see him try to come forward and put Hatton out of his misery, out of catching a knockdown earlier. You will typically see most players try to jump on that opportunity to come forward or after realizing that they can hold their opponent, see if they can't have the same repeated success in the next round. But Dave the Rip one mixing up those high and low combinations and taking care of his defensive responsibilities, those combos that he's throwing out and starting to make Cotto put his hands in his pocket and not come forward with the combinations that he needs in order to pick him off from the outside in order to keep Hatton away from him. Uh, now we're seeing Cotto starting, you know, maybe he'll press him back a little bit more, but you always see Hatton counter with that pressure game and is able to put him back with whether it's a counter or it's just one of those devastating body shots. He's able to back Cotto against the ring and against the ropes and it's not really a position that you want to be in especially with an inside fighter slash brawler like Cotto you would like to see him being the guy to out pressure and outwork a person especially with a lower fighter um, overall wise you would like to see him put a bit more pressure on his opponent and go for the knockout himself uh, starting to go for those back step straights and side step uppercuts in order to score his quick points and this man is leaking can see the blood dripping down from Miguel Cotto's eye and his nose and I hope this corner will be able to take care of that but as you can see on my scorecard I have it two rounds to one in favor of Miguel Cotto with the knockdown that gives him that early point advantage that you will expect uh, most fighters using the low overall to suffer uh, like I said it's very hard typically to stay away from your opponents or you know be able to land credible shots or effective shots on your opponent with the fact that he's backing up all the time and your accuracy does become a problem using low overall fighters but that 10-8 point advantage that he has in the bag from the knockdown scored and I believe round one or two is going to come into handy later on and Miguel Cotto really starting to turn up the pressure here with these hook combinations uh He's expanding a lot of stamina here and I would like to see him relax a little bit after scoring some nice points and stay on the outside and use his defense a little bit more because this is going to generally affect his stamina recovery quite bad if he's not able to get it together. Uh, you've seen Dave be a bit more relaxed here, Hatton staying on the outside a lot more now. Uh, Miguel Cotto starting to turn up that pressure and figuring either maybe his stamina is low or he's figuring that he's hurting Hatton bad enough that he can apply the pressure and go for the kill here in round four uh, as possibly even the fact that he may know that he is losing this fight well winning this fight but hadn't scored a, a round against him in round three can make him want to actually put forth a bit more offense maybe he was trying to conserve his stamina these are all questions that come up when playing this game and questions you have to ask yourself constantly if you want to be a good fighter or just be able to compete with a better fighter or in this case take out a lower overall fighter coming down to the last 20 seconds here in this round uh you see both fighters being a bit more tentative now uh the rip run didn't really expand a lot of his combinations and follow up the momentum that he gained in round three i do believe that was a codal round just due to the difference in hip power chin power and weight advantage that's also a key thing that we're seeing here with Hatton at 140 pounds and Miguel being at 147 pounds that does give him an extra little umph on his punches against Hatton and like we said earlier those low overall fighters really do tend to struggle uh, against bigger fighters one in weight class and two being at the disadvantage with overall wise uh, it's not the best thing that you'll see here but round five is going on here and this has pretty much been a Miguel Cotto fight uh, Cotto's just been able to box really well on the outside and use the power advantage that Miguel Cotto has uh, using a lot of steps whether it's a back step straight a side step uppercut or a side step hook 
in order to uh, try to land some clean shots on Hatton and it's been pretty effective but you gotta wonder where Miguel Cotto's stamina is at this point. The Rit one has been providing some pretty nice body work throughout the entirety of the fight, especially with those high and low combinations. We have seen a few times where he has put his hands in his pocket, and there we go. He gets the knockdown, and I'm sorry, son, get your chin check. He hits a beautiful pinpoint uppercut with the left hand and able to drop Miguel Cotto onto the canvas for his first time in the night. So, Hatton is able to score that knockdown back that he suffered earlier and that's going to be a key turning point in this fight right about now ladies and gentlemen. I would like to see Hatton continue to apply pressure and look to see some better defense from Miguel if he's going to want to survive the rest of this round without receiving another knockdown. Minute into the final, uh, a minute left in the fifth round and I'm looking I'm liking what I'm seeing here from Miguel he's just trying to pick his shots be a bit more tentative now rely on his defense and try to pot shot from the outside and look for high scoring shots like the power straight or maybe just catching with an overhand punch something that requires the stick he stuns Hatton momentarily but he's able to recover it and wisely back so off both men look like they are starting to deteriorate in terms of stamina. I do believe that is what it is that has caused this knockdown on Miguel with one, the constant pressure, and two, low stamina, which eventually will cause you to be knocked down if you are not careful with how you box it. So this has been a pretty interesting fight. I do start to see things starting to shift over for the RIT one. I'm seeing it two rounds to three right about now uh, with Miguel taking the first and second hat in slash Dave the Rit one taking the third and that fifth round. I do believe Miguel still has the advantage because of his knockdown one and him just winning the fourth round and turning up the pressure will probably give him a one point lead advantage at this point. And you see him starting to beat a pressure fighter now, trying to use that big body of his, no homo, in order to pressure the Rit one and use that seven pound weight advantage and see if he can not catch another knockdown. Um, this has been like I said, this has been a back and forth fight. It's anybody's fight now. Um, I like what I've seen from Hatton being able to shift the momentum back on his side with that knockdown. And with a, about a minute 30, hit it, about to head into the minute 30 mark. Uh, I'll expect to see more defense from Hatton after uh, landing some nice combinations and landing some nice shots in order to just stick on the outside, pot shot his opponent, and score the points necessary that he needs. Also, both fighters really have to be cautious of their stamina as he gets the counter straight to the body and he's able to put him down for a second time. And it's another chin check that puts him down. That left uppercut does the job again. And down goes Mikel Cotto for the second time tonight. He had he done really well early on, but like I said, both guys needed to watch his stamina. I like the adjustment that Hatton has made at this point to sit back, relax. Let him be the aggressor, pick his shots, and worry about his defense. When he's not working, make sure he's covering up, make sure he's getting out of range, and he gets another counter right hook to the body. I, I have to say, that must be the Rip One signature shot. You've seen it over many of his matches on YouTube over time. During the history of the league, you'll see that counter right hook to the body come useful in fights against Fight Night's Finest, uh, Relapse, and many other members of the league. 8Z Gaming for you, that counter right hook to the body has just been one of those signature punches for Day the Rip one throughout the years. And you're seeing him put it to good use in this fight and using those counter abilities that he has with his head movement in order to score nice body work and able to stun his opponent to the body. So, we're now into the round 7 where I believe Ricky Hatton has taken the lead in this fight, Day the Rip one doing a nice job of taking the fight back to his opponent being a little smarter in the later stages and mid stages of this round and we're about to enter into the championship rounds There's still four rounds to go if you include the seventh the eighth the ninth and the tenth it's going to be a fight that looks like it's going to come down to the wire both fighters being able to make adjustments in which they feel will give them the advantage against each other as miguel Cotto lands that signature of his the side step right up a cut uh punch that's pretty much abused by the entire fight night community uh, where most guys will look for that size step uppercut in order to score a quick shot or get a quick counter off with head movement not being what it was back in round four. It is extremely hard 
to score counters against your opponent and he connects with another side step right uppercut and is able to do quite a bit of damage to Hatton but he just doesn't have the stamina and he's able to stun him momentarily but he looks to be pretty strong on his feet now probably a bell ringer that is in the state that he is that put him in the state that he is in now and of course you gotta apply pressure whenever you have the chance you know score as many points as you can before you look to play defense um, both fighters now starting to rely on combination punching in order to score the points that they need and back with the signature counter right hook to the body you've seen it many times from him tonight and it's doing him great justice it's how also he was able to catch that stun early on and I'm liking when I see him from Dave the Rit one and this is just one of the advantages that come from the power game and the pressure game if you're able to just put a body near your opponent it makes them feel like they have to work more than what they necessarily have to do. And I'm getting the feeling from Miguel Cotto here that he is not confident in his defense. He's expecting a pot shot, uses combinations and the side step uppercut and back step straights in order to really um, score most of his shots. He's an offensive minded fighter. And that's the thing that you find with a lot of these outside fighters nowadays. And Miguel Cotto is still leaking quite bad from under his left eye and on his nose. So that's something to look forward to in the later rounds. And now you're just seeing a completely one-sided fight that looked to be very competitive early on. Dave the Rip one able to take back control of this fight. Won in five rounds in a row. Like I said, I did believe Kodo did win the fourth round. It was one of those rounds that you could possibly say was up for grabs. But in my opinion, maybe just due to the lack of stamina that Miguel Kodo has and the defense that was poor forth in that round. It is possible that Miguel Cotto did win, uh, did win that fourth round, or he lost it. On my scorecard, like I said, I have the fight three, four in favor of Dave the Rip one. And like I said, this fight is still up for grabs. It could still be an adjustment made by Cotto that can bring him back to, into this match. I like to see him establish that jab and use that weight advantage that he has on Hatton a little bit more. But uh, he just can't come forward. And we see it again. Another knockdown by Dave the Rip one. It was a 1-2 that time that put him down on the canvas. And that's three knockdowns now. So those are three 10-8 rounds that he has in the bank. To even if the fact that he just wants to play defense for these next remaining rounds. That he will have the ability to win this fight. A minute 30 below a minute 30 left in the 8th round and it has been a fantastic fight that has been taken over by Dave the Rip one and at this point Miguel Cotto has to rely on his jab and has to rely on his boxing skills I will not look for power punches I will simply look for counters stay away from the ropes do not let my opponent in this case Ricky Hatton cut the ring off I would like to see him establish that jab a little bit more and continue to work the outside as you see him do here simple combinations whether it's a 1-2 uh, simple counters that's the way to go a little bit too late just due to the fact that uh, one he's low in stamina and two he's already been knocked down this round so it's a very good chance that he will not make it to the final belt if he is not careful with how he replays these remaining rounds and he's gonna need knockdowns also if he wants to come back into the fight and have a chance of winning it and that's the end of the eighth round and we now head into the ninth round Ricky Hatton doing a wonderful job all fight of one turning around uh, what looked to be a hopeless situation for him in the first two rounds into his fight. Is his fight to lose or is his fight to win? Any mistake that can be possibly made on him will be to be too aggressive at this point. You have the points advantage, stay on the outside, and there is a sign of hope for Miguel Cotto. He is able to stun Ricky Hatton and now is looking to turn up the pressure. He's starting to cut off the ring. He's looking for that jab first and then looking for those uppercuts that have been working for him all fight in order to get in range and do the maximum damage that he can to day the Rip One. Uh, the Rip One really just needs to focus on defense at this point. Like I said, he has the 10-8 rounds in the bag where he can sacrifice these last two rounds and still win this fight very easily. Uh, a minute 30 approaching the minute 30 mark, the halfway mark in this round starting to approach. And you see Hatton staying on the outside and doing exactly what he needs to. Pot shot and then looking for counters and he gets the counter jab to the body. And is able to put him back down onto the canvas which will be for the fourth time. It was a left hook this time and that left hand has been dangerous all night for Dave the Rip one. And 
He scored his fourth knockdown of the fight. That's four 10-8 rounds in the bag. Without question, ha um, Miguel Cotto needs a knockout in order to win. And with how low everybody's stamina is at this point, I just don't see a knockdown happening for Miguel. And just having the outside is a huge advantage. This game ca caters towards outside fighters. And you're starting to see that pay dividends now. Uh, the bait that he's able to do coming on the inside, step out of range or land a nice combo, force his, op his opponent to come forward and continuously blocking shots, forces Miguel Cotto to be on the offensive. He gets a nice count of back step straight there and those has been one of those things that has worked for him in the first three rounds and you're now seeing him starting to get back to his bread and butter in order to try to catch a knockout in this fight. One thing though, Miguel Cotto has to be extremely careful. I, if it was me, just so I want to be knocked out, I'll probably go for the illegal blow and know that the next blow that I throw, if I get stunned, the next illegal shot that I throw will probably get me into the 10th or just to the end of this fight. And you see the leakage continuing from under the left eye and on the nose. I'm, I'm assuming that nose is broken. It has to affect the stamina recovery. And we're into the 10th and final round of what has been a competitive fight early changed in mid game by Ricky Hatton and then has established his dominance all throughout the later rounds so far in this fight. I don't see this changing. Miguel Cotto has to be very, very lucky here. Look for big shots and counter shots. When you have low stamina, your best thing to do is to just go for a counter punch. Power shots don't really do much to your opponents. Counter shots uses your opponents a mo momentum against them and fires back the damage double and it's the only time or only chance that you have of being successful he gets a counter straight back does Dave the Ritt one is able to stun him and put Miguel Cotto down onto the canvas for the final time that is it ladies and gentlemen there is no way he can get up this has been a dominating performance in the fight by Dave the Ritt one I have to say he did fought hard I respect the game of Miguel Cotto Send that guy a message. Let me know what you guys thought in the comment section of this match and of this fight. And if you like the casting thing that's going on. Send me your matches. If you want to see um, more of these. This is your boy Fight Next Finest. The Sofa Commentator. And I'm off this. Peace.